Let's see if we're live. 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 Let's see. All right, let's see. There we go. Retrieving your content. Are you ready to go live? Let's go. Let's do it. Oh, I can hear myself. I can see myself. I don't want to. There we go. All right. Uh, what's going on, guys? It's Ricky with Tech Solutions. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yep, I'm Dave. Um, just met up with Ricky today. Uh, we got kind of stranded in, in um, the Bay Area, so we picked him up and had some fun. But uh, now we're talking day trading, swing trading in a Starbucks. Yep, so like always, guys, uh, when we try to meet up with uh, TechBud members, actually not always, I think I've only done this once before, um, but Dave has actually only been in our chat, uh, or has only been day trading and trying to swing trade for about one week, right? Um, you're going to see how quick uh, he has actually learned. He has um, just really learned by, if you want to talk a little bit more about how have you learned. Yeah, mostly your videos, um, and I've been, I'm on the West Coast, and I realize that this is something that I can do in the morning before work. Um, so I've been working up, waking up around six every morning, and taking fifty minutes to look at my stocks, and then joining Ricky and, and listening to his fifty minutes on his uh, his pre market um, analysis. And yeah, so far like five days of that. Made a couple trades, some of them good, some of them bad. But yeah. um, you know, just excited to learn more, and, and this is really fun. Yeah. Definitely. So one of the coolest things about Dave is that I think he has a pretty decent understanding um, of. Uh, I mean, he, ha he has a, like a math background, so he's pretty good in, uh, uh, with that specific background. He has the Thinkorswim uh, application set up kind of like we do that you guys can see on the screen. Um, it is a free platform that you guys have access to, and I do have a video on that. Uh, now, one of the things I think that people lack in most is discipline, um, having access to good quality stocks, and having the proper kind of just like understanding on how to be successful when it comes to trading. That's something that I think uh, Dave doesn't really lack in. Um, I mean, he has a Thinkorswim platform. Uh, I saw his watch list and I was like, bro, those, these are all the stocks that we've been trading. He's like, I was like, how are you finding them? Just like how you guys always ask. And he's like, all I do is I listen to the TechBoot Solutions voice chat and I just add them to my watch list. It doesn't mean that he sees value in them. It just means that he adds them to his watch list and he breaks them down. If he sees value in them, great, he keeps them. I'm guessing if you don't see value in them, then yeah, he ends up removing them from his watch list. But overall, that's how he's been consistently growing his watch list. Now, um, one of the other things is that he's really good actually at drawing the support and resistance lines and being able to identify the margin of profit. I think the only thing that, um, I mean, he was recently telling me about, you know, him really wanting to focus on swing trades uh, just because obviously someone that has, uh, you know, a career going on um, right now, right, you, you have a little bit more availability, but realistically, um, in the grand scheme of things, like he's going to want to make sure that he can take advantage of opportunity uh, that's realistic and that he can do it um, by still being able to do it with a job and stuff like that. So I think that's something that we're going to be focusing on. We're going to be talking about day trades, swing trades, and uh, let's try to keep it within 10 minutes. And uh, that's going to be because uh, I jabber around a lot. So feel free to ask your questions. Yep. Um, and I actually want you, if it's okay, yep. on my think or swim uh, for you to start breaking down stocks. And uh, I hope that you guys can use this as like a learning experience. If he has any questions, I'm sure that they might be similar questions that you guys might have as well. Um, and then we'll get to answering all your questions personally at the very end. So um, if you kind of want to go down the list, then yeah. uh, you let me know if you see value in it, you know, the desired entry point, sell point, you know, what it is that you would want it to do and mm. stuff like that. So I'm going to start at the top. Let's do it. So my watch list is organized by volume from top to bottom. Mm. I told you I find that to be one of the most important things. Um, and if you guys saw that right away, he went to the 180 day chart. Why is it that you did that? Uh, and I usually was trading in, in um, a much smaller uh, time time axis because um, I was more interested in day trading and I was kind of seeing how the stock is behaving recently. But um, but Ricky showed me that you can you can see a lot more potential or or you can accurately predict um, using lines that may have showed up like as much as six months ago or more um, that will act as resistances or support lines. So. Um, Having sort of a, a longer sighted um, analysis. Yes, I think having like a better analysis. understanding on how the stock has been doing within the past year can give you a better understanding that you know within the next couple of days for the day trades or swing trades, mm -hmm. you have a better understanding that you know is this a day trade or is this a swing trade, mm -hmm. and is this a stock that I feel comfortable holding if I have to, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, cool. Tell me what you think about TEVA. So TEVA uh, had a huge sell off right here, and. Um, you know, sort of bounced up around here and, and hit a low around 13.80 um, and then bounced back up and this, look, what do you call this, a cup and handle? Um, yeah, like it kind of built a cup trend, yeah. Sort of a cup. Um, and so, 
Sorry, as, so as it broke through here, it came down and it didn't break back down through the support um, and it, it um, you know, rose back up, but then this time it broke down below the EMA and broke down through the support and is now kind of, um, sort of looks like it has an overall downward trend, um, but let's see. We can just zoom out, right? Yeah, we can just zoom out. Um, this this looks like the lowest point this entire year. So unless we start to see this come up, and I guess I can see Ricky has has a has an alert right here at sixteen forty. About if it comes up past that, then we can. Um, like, would you consider trading this stock right now? No, I would not consider trading the stock now. And why is until, that? Because um, because it could continue to drop, and and I I think that's one of the biggest things. So um, I I think looking at it like kind of like big picture. We've identified a low point, right? Uh, usually where it bounces at. Uh, we've identified a high point where it usually peaks out at. Um, and then there's an overall like small support here where it's previously bounced at at about $17, right? So this is a support, this is a resistance. When it breaks above that, then this becomes a support and this becomes a resistance, right? Um, right now, it's still trending below EMA. Uh, so with that being said, um, what does that mean? Well, it means that the stock is still depreciating and as a, you know, as an investor, to invest in something that's depreciating in value. Uh, personally, I want to invest in something that's seen an upward trend, right? That's broken above EMA and that's trending up, right? Yep. Uh, with that being said, that's why I have my alert set at 16, because uh, when it does start building that cup um, and breaks above the EMA, I see that to be around 16. Um, and once it breaks above 16, um, you know, it, it will most likely, um, I mean, the easiest way I can put it, it will most likely build kind of this little cup trend um, and as well build that cup trend, break above 16 and most likely continue trending up. So I have that set, set indicator so I can follow up with TEVA when it's meeting certain criteria um, that, you know, okay, well, TEVA is now trending back up. It offers still potential for profit from, you know, 16 uh, to about $90. That's about almost 15% potential for profit. So that's pretty huge, especially for a string trade. Uh, understanding that, yeah. Um, Right now, it's still trending down. So at the moment right now, I really don't care too much about TEVA as it continues to trend down. Um, again, I want to invest in something that's showing value, like, you know, uh, especially long-term. And TEVA does not look to be showing, you know, a uh, long-term value. So with that being said is, if it breaks above 16, great. Uh, I'll follow up with it and see if it's still meeting my criteria. It doesn't mean that I have to trade it to the 100%, but I can follow up with it. And I know that it's at least following up or, or uh, following similar characteristics of stocks that I like investing in. Um, and if it doesn't follow it, then I can simply remove it from my watch list and again, focus on good quality stocks. So mm -hmm. I think that's a, go ahead. And, and one of the things that I find uh, that I haven't been doing that Ricky does all the time is he's setting these alerts that kind of allow him to put the stock on the back burner without actually wiping it out of his watch list. Yep. And when a stock comes into a zone or a range that he's interested in, um, then he can re re reanalyze and um, now the stock's relevant again. Definitely, it's it's um, you know it offers all this potential right now. It's at the lowest point, and people think, oh man, look how low it is. You know, uh, we should buy it now because it's it's bound to bounce. Nothing's bound to bounce. I don't care how much you hope about uh, uh, hope a company bounces. Realistically, like your hopes mean nothing, right? When it comes down to the actual fundamental reasons, like why stock is increasing and decreasing. With that being said. All I do is I have a series of stocks, I identify potential, I see the ones that are relevant, the ones that are irrelevant, the ones that are irrelevant at the moment, I set my alerts, once they become relevant, I will be alerted. I follow up with them, I formulate a plan, I manage my risk, if the potential for profit is greater than the potential for loss, then I choose to take a position, and then I do it all over again. So it's a very simple technique, um, and it's very systematic, very boring, but it's very consistent. So I think um, in the grand scheme of things, like it, it should be pretty easy. So time to move on to the next one, yeah. All right. Let's do you guys. Our favorite one. Let's go. Cool. Right. <laughs> cool. Um, this already has the one year analysis. And so, right now it's at a pretty good low point. Um, it had come, let's see, that was a little while ago. Um, between this support and, or this support and this resistance, it's looking to get pretty close to. Um, this lower lower resistance. So what we're going to look for is we're going to look for it to come down to here. We're going to look for it to bounce, and if it does potentially bounce, then we can buy in and hopeful and look for it to come up to like 11. Or I mean, Ricky's sometimes much more conservative, right? So maybe like <laughs> you know, 
eleven dollars <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, so that's a ten percent um, margin for profit, and that's uh, that's pretty solid, I think. Definitely. I, I think that's that's a very simple breakdown. So if you guys can see, not only has it bounced here before, uh, right? It's gone even lower than nine dollars and fifty cents, and we've called it out when it was at nine dollars and fifty cents. Um, and if you guys looked at my top stocks for October, what did I say? I was like, look. You guys is at $9.50, this is a known support area. What am I gonna wait for? I'm gonna wait for it to truly break above $10 and start showing signs of an upward trend. What did we do? We set our alerts when it breaks above 10, it broke above 10, we took a position, we sold at uh, 11, I sold at 10.80. We had traders make 10% plus on that trade. Um, people find that you know swing trading, uh, swing trading is not the most profitable um, you know market um, or because of momentum trading. I want to ask all you momentum traders, how consistent are you with seeing 10% growth every single week? Um, because it's about consistency that matters. It doesn't matter if you're up, you know, 20% one week and you know you're down 10% the following week, because then you know we're back at 10% net profit. Um, so in the grand scheme of things, I think we keep it pretty simple. Uh, we identify low points based on previous supports, uh, known resist, known resistant areas, high points, right? 11, 11, 20. Um, we wait for the validation. Once it validates it, uh, we take advantage of the opportunity, we manage our risk, and then we sell where we see value. So therefore, we have a complete understanding of what it is that we're investing in, why, right? Because it's a previous support uh, and the risk involved. Cut losses below um, $10, lock in profits, anything above 1080. Um, so I think that's a solid one. Today we had a pretty green day. I actually uh, did end up trading you guys. I locked it in right when it broke uh, below 1060 today. Um, um, and it wasn't a huge trade, uh, but again, profit is profit, and I'd be more than happy to lock in the 2.5% profit that I made today uh, than having to have held this one overnight and not knowing how it would have performed, right? So um, I think overall, you guys, because we broke it down earlier, um, if we look at you guys and kind of how it stands, it still offers a little bit more potential for profit for it to go up to like 11.25, which is a known resistance area, as you guys can see based on these two peaks. So that's about 5.77% potential for profit. That's pretty solid, especially if you can do that all within a day. Yep. Um, this is a potential swing trade, but realistically, if you can if you can go from top to bottom, uh, from bottom to top, all within one day, I'll take 5%, almost 6% any day, right? So um, let's go ahead and move on to X and then go from there. Okay, so um, we have a known resistance at $28. Mm -hmm. And let's see, it's trending. What did it recently do? So uh, I remember I called this one out for our mm -hmm. Sunday stock talk, and mm -hmm. we called out the resistance at twenty eight dollars. What did it recently do? Uh, so if you go and zoom in a little bit closer to the here, yeah, yeah. Okay. I get. Do you see how it hit almost mm -hmm. highs of twenty eight, and then what did it do? Exactly. It just it uh, came back down and, and it sold off. So it had a valid resistance at um, twenty eight. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it validated that resistance. So now it's seen signs of a downward trend. Mm -hmm. It kind of started to consolidate right there at twenty six fifty. So what can uh, most likely happen? Uh, can we get a potential bounce at 26.50? Yeah, we can get a potential bounce. Um, I mean, looking at some of our other data here, it looks like uh, this is telling us momentum down. Is that yeah, fair? Um, uh, well, th that's the MACD indicator, so it, it gives us a better understanding that it's still most likely going to continue trending down. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we don't always want to solely rely on an indicator, but that, that's a really good understanding that yeah. you know this thing has definitely hit, hit a resistance at about $28, started mm -hmm. trending down, and it's consolidating at $26.50. So I think keeping it very simple, we can do one of two things. Breaks below $26.50, mm -hmm. we know that it's most likely heading back down to $24, $24.50, mm -hmm. known as its previous support. Um, and if it breaks and holds above $26.50, then we know that it's most likely going to try to trend back up to twenty-seven fifty to twenty-eight dollars. So, so you probably set an alert here somewhere. Yeah, you can set an alert. That that's it. <laughs> you got it. So, uh, great alert. Great alert. For like what? I say twenty-six seventy-five. Seventy-five. At or above, I think that. Oh, okay. you got it. Sweet, sweet. Okay. Cool. And then uh, let's set an alert when it goes below it. So it looks like the all-time low. If you hover right below one of that one of those whiskers, mm -hmm. uh, right there. Got it. So again, we broke it down. Uh, grand scheme, uh, like big picture for X, um, it's continuously been seeing an upward trend. Um, so with that being said, um, well, it's been seeing an upward trend since its initial like you know pullback. So uh, one of the things that I noticed here is that look, it has a resistance here at twenty eight dollars. It has a previous support here, so it definitely does have a lot of margin to sell off if it does. And I don't want to write it all the way down. That's why we want to make sure that we get in at a good point when it's indicated an upward trend. So if I can take advantage of an opportunity with twenty six dollars, twenty six fifty to twenty eight dollars, that's still um, some some 
potential for profit. Realistically, I don't actually see myself trading this one because the actual potential for profit is anywhere from three to five percent. That's not that's not worth it for me because the potential for loss is much greater, yep. right? So the, the the risk, the reward slash risk ratio is. Uh, I talk about that in my lesson library. It's a little bit too uh, high. So um, it does show to be like a good quality stock, and it's been seeing signs of an upward trend. It's just too high for me at the current price point. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna set an alert once it goes below 25. And uh, at 25, it will have more value for me, right? As it will for many other investors because it's at a much lower known support area. Um, I think that's it. So, can we do CDTI? Let's do it. Yeah. So you you, you do what it is that you want to do. So. So okay. he called the uh, he found heard about this stock during. Uh, it was Friday. Somebody Friday? was calling out on Friday. Um, I don't know who it was, but I was on voice chat and in the main chat room, and, and somebody called this out, and it looks pretty good. So let's see. You got it. Okay, so let's do. I can see back here. There's like six months ago or something. This is a, um, a support or a, yeah, support line back then. So if you just want to call it out and, and kind of like uh, pencil, uh, like kind of hover over it and tell them why it's a support line. Okay, so you can see that um, it kind of was trending upwards and then it came down and it bounced uh, right around here. Um, and then another thing that I see is over here. Um, this same line sort of acts as a resistance, so that kind of verifies that this was a support and is now a uh, new resistance, so that's Perfect. why I have that there. And then you can kind of see that it bounced to two other locations, one here and one here, and so I'm going to call $1. this... $1.50, right? $1.50, I'm going to call this our, uh, another um, support. support line. Alright, well that's not perfect, but... Um, <laughs> and so right now, um, I, I see two opportunities because um, because it's kind of high in this uh, in this like support resistance uh, bracket, I would say. So one of two things could happen. I think I think either it could trend down, and we could look to buy somewhere around here and and try to sell um, closer to this resistance, and that'll give you know massive. I mean that says fifty percent, but like uh, it would actually be from one fifty uh, to uh, two dollars and twenty five cents. So that's thirty three percent. What, what was it that you did? I don't know. I think I went backwards. Yeah, you went. Uh, uh, it should have been almost the same. It actually should have been more from bottom to top. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but um, I think the easiest way that I uh, that I put it into perspective when it comes down to I think you did a great job of like you called it a bracket. Uh, I like to call them margins. Mm -hmm. um, so right now we have a margin from about like one dollar and fifty cents to about um, I'd say even just two dollars. So let's just mm -hmm. call it two dollars and twenty cents to be a resistance. Mm -hmm. So that's a margin of support and resistance. If it breaks above this what happens then there's a previous high that you can see over here um well there's there's one like here of three dollars yeah of, of about three dollars and so that gives us you know uh another one whole dollar which let's do this um 28 percent. so so i think actually these two margins are pretty similar to each other yeah um what did i do I don't know how I got that 50. <laughs> no, it's because I think you're going from uh, top to bottom. So, oh, yeah. so yeah, you're good. No, you're good with that. Yeah. And so, okay, so so let's set some alerts. Let's go in here. Um, we know that if it continue, continues to trend up, and what do we say, 220? Yeah. Um, we're going to want to set an alert here. And that's actually a little close, because um, you can see that it's at 219, actually, at the market price. Let's set it at 230. 230. And so if it breaks above this, then we're going to look to verify that it's on an upward trend and we're gonna see if it's um if it shows value to us that we can buy into uh that upper margin or yeah. it could potentially um start going down and i would say you know, let's zoom out just a little bit more um i would say maybe somewhere around here at 175, <coughs> if it comes down here, then we can start looking. Maybe it'll keep dropping, and we can get in at a lower price. Be but, alerted before it hits the support. We can get an alert here, and yeah. So I think that covers yeah, that's, both scenarios. That's that's really just it. So again, uh, just to recap, we have a margin. Um, so these are, I think, very quickly the margins that I see right here. So support, resistance. If it breaks above this, this becomes a new support. This becomes a new resistance. If it breaks this one. Then again, 372 is going to be the next resistance. If it pulls back, this becomes a support. If it breaks below it, that becomes a resistance. This becomes a support. If it breaks below that, this becomes a resistance. And then this becomes, again, the same support. This is a cool stock. I like this one. Right. And he called it this one out. I mean, I 
I think we did uh, get a, a couple people calling it out, but again, so many stocks get called out. And a really cool thing about you is that you saw value in this one. You saw the, the, the margins. And I think that's one of the coolest things. If it continues to trend up, it offers value. If it pulls back, it still offers value, but at a lower price point. Very simple, yep. right? Um, so I think this is probably one of uh, the top stocks that we want to follow up with for this upcoming week. Um, and other than that, do you have any other ones that you're kind of watching? Um, uh, Jill was interesting, but then I heard news on that one. Um, so I kind of want to stay away from that just because I don't understand it completely. And it's, it's not something that, so while maybe there's value, um, I don't want to trade, like Ricky said, I don't want to trade anything that I don't understand. So. Um, it's not worth the risk. It's not worth the risk. For me. Yeah. So uh, he heard some yeah. actual news that uh, there's some possible news of like possible tax invasion and um, something that court can actually earnings. court earnings. Yeah. Okay. So something that can actually continue to bring the uh, the price down even more. So it offers opportunity, and this is a known trend. It's a huge dip buy, and you know if it continues trending up, I have my alerts to be able to take advantage of the opportunity as a day trade. But understanding yeah. the grand scheme of things, um, I definitely don't want to swing trade this stock because of all the bad news that could continue to come out and continue to drag that price down. Um, and that's really just it. So if you guys are, are asking, well, what kind of trend do you see here? Uh, I think it's very similar to the stock that we called out when it's EFX. Um, it had a huge sell-off, um, built the support, and started broke when it broke above VMA, it started trending up. And uh, it was up almost like you know 20% from our call out at the $90 support. Yeah, 26%. Very simple trend. It's that cup and handle. We wait, identify the pullback, wait for it to validate the support, start trending up, wait for it to break above VMA, and then kind of ride it out from there. Uh, but I think that's really just it. I, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about the techniques. I think you did a great job with that. Do you want to talk about any more? I think you know. Is there any I think we're pretty good. I think we're running pretty long. <laughs> yeah. With um, yeah, that, that's really just it. So. I, All right. Just I, yeah. The other thing on Jill, I guess, is is that I guess we, we don't have to forget about it completely. I, I think that we can set our alerts, and, and I can see there's an alert set there that yep. um, you know if it does keep dropping, then it's off our radar. But um, if it does come back up and it has the potential to break back through that EMA, then we want our eyes back on it, and that's what the alerts are great for. I think that's awesome. Definitely, it's just uh, keeping you like up to date and aware of stocks that are you know in your favor, right? Or like like kind of like. If you guys ever use that Excel sheet that I have, it's called the primary pick checklist. Mm. You put all the stocks in your watch list um, in that sheet, and then there's certain filters that each stock has to meet. And until they meet all those stocks, they don't move on to the next watch list. Mm. So something that I like to do is I like to tell traders to, okay, put all your stocks that you see value in, in this watch list. And then once they start meeting certain criteria that they're better quality stocks, you know, you want one of your picking cherries, you want to make sure that they're prime, right? So you move them over to a nice little basket of good quality stocks and you focus on those because it's very overwhelming for new traders and even experienced traders when, you know, there's a bunch of stocks being called out in our voice channels and stuff like that. Ignore all the noise. Yep. Keep it simple. Manage your uh, manage the risk and every position that you take and only invest in what you understand We have three rules with tech but solutions You don't invest based on other people's opinion You don't invest in what you don't understand uh, and you always have a plan Which is a form of risk management before investing with that being said um, Everything it is that you take on is your responsibility and you know You're the one that could be held accountable for whatever whatever it is that you do uh, And that's really just it. So anything else that you want to say? What do you think? Because you learned so quick, and it surprised me that he's only been doing this for a week. And he said he start, he subscribed to me about a week ago, and he's already learned all this. He's been very active with our uh, Discord uh, mm -hmm. voice channel. Again, TechBud Solutions is a free networking group. It's, I think, the fifth link in the description if you guys want to join our free Facebook group. And on the top pinned post, you can access the Discord group chat, which is also free. Um, but is it just... I think, I think that has been the, the single most uh, effective thing for me. Um, I've been waking up for market open, and I've been listening to um, all the callouts on um, on the voice chat. And so I've been I've been running them down, and I actually use two two watch lists. Um, I have one watch list with everything, and then I have another one that's just like his um, Excel sheet. That is all the ones that I have um, analyzed, and, and I see more value in. <laughs> what the heck? Um, I didn't see that. That's super legit. Okay. But, I actually um, don't even have that, so that, that's that's you see. Yeah, and so, and the other thing is um, putting in time where you're not like you're not actively trading the stock. You're actually kind of um, you know maybe in the evening before or something. You're you're looking at you know 180 day trends. It's it's all available to you at any time. So I think um, you can get out a lot if you put in some time. Sweet. Um, but other than that, guys, um, thank you guys again for tuning in. If you guys found this video helpful, feel free to give the video a thumbs up. Thank you again for my friend Dave uh, for finally meeting up. Dude, I can't, he, he literally drove me everywhere in San Francisco. It, it came out to be 
um, a very like it was originally like a very like useless trip uh, for what it is that I originally came out for, and then I ended up coming. I made a new friend. I hoping hoping to work together in the future, and uh, it, it's just um, so amazing that we uh, we get a that I get like you know the opportunity to work with like you know such he's he's so smart. It's my pleasure as well. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, but other than that, um, thank you guys for, again for everything that you guys do. Continue working hard. Continue following dreams and let your passion be what drives you in your success. I do want to remind you guys our mentorship program is officially sold out for this first uh, month session. Um, for all those that still want to be part of the lesson library and want access to a little bit more structured content, that's going to be the first link in the description. And it just pretty much sums up oh, my you know over 500 YouTube videos that I have on YouTube. Um, and they're brand new videos uh, into a little bit less than six hours of content uh, into really nice just structured content that explains to you my approach about the stock market and what has led to my success so if you see value in that great if not feel free to subscribe and i upload daily free videos um that's really just it so thank you guys again like always let's make sure that we're in the year on a green note take care team <laughs>